My second video right here, because I uh, I don't know what my time is, but uh, yeah, this is on Barack Obama again. That first video was on, uh, they went to visit his family. This one right here is he, this guy, uh, visiting the people that live around his brother. And I realized, with a slightly weird feeling, that this is the biggest story in the United States, the actual ideological underpinning of the president huh. of the United States. And he's... And it is not being reported by any major newspaper, magazine, or network. So I make the film, put it in the theater. It grosses $33 million, another $10 million in DVD, seen by 8 million people. And yet if you were to turn on CNN or MSNBC or CBS, you would see no mention of the film whatsoever, as if it did not exist. Huh. The point I'm trying to make is that I'm actually giving you anecdotal, but rather telling evidence that we are living in a time when our national press has kind of stopped being a press. Hear that? They're not actually covering the news. And we can get to why in a moment. So 2016 comes out, and then a ferocious attack on the film appears on a guy's personal website, BarackObama.com. This film is a horrible smear. This film misrepresents me. Uh, this film tells all kinds of lies. What kind of lies? This film says that um, I want to stop oil drilling in America while I'm subsidizing oil drilling in Brazil. Oh? So then I go on the web as I invite you to Google Obama oil drilling Brazil. And you will see that Obama goes to Brazil in 2009. He's funded the Brazilian drilling program, and he says, we want to support your drilling program, so when you drill for oil, and you have oil, and you're ready to sell oil, I, America, want to stand in line to be your best customer. Quote, unquote. So, needless to say, um, I seem not to have endeared myself to our <laughs> great president. <laughs> And then remarkably, shortly after that, I was uh, hanging out in my apartment in New York, and I, my phone rings. I look at the phone, it's a call from Kenya. I look at it. Hmm, it's George Obama, the president's brother. Hello, George. Hello, Dinesh. Why are you calling me? Uh, well, I'm at the hospital. I have a one-year-old kid who's really sick and needs health care. I don't have any money, Dinesh. Can you send me $1,000? I'm like, George, are you trying to scam me? He's like, no, 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 I'm telling the truth. I'm like, okay, hand the phone to the nurse. Hands the phone over. I verify that, in fact, this is true. And I say, George, isn't there somebody else you can call? George goes, no. No. <laughs> so here is our friend Obama prancing around the country. We are our brother's keeper. Huh. Here is his real brother in the slums of Nairobi trying to spend, a, who needs a little bit of money for health care for his sick kid, and he can't count on Obama to help him. Oh, hear that? Remarkable country we live in. So, you people are all Obama worshippers. But is it reported in the New York Times? No. Time Magazine? No. The Networks? No. Imagine if Mitt Romney had a brother That's living in the That's how the started from the beginning. That was the beginning. You know, so one of the things that I really want to focus on is making sure that when somebody comes to that moment where they're ready to, to see another possibility for their life, um, that there's, there's somebody there to, to help them along. Liar. Yeah. I bet your brother. You liar. See? That's what I'm talking about, guys. This country has become corrupt. He turned the uh, White House into a mosque. And he doesn't even take care of his brother. Hear that? It's all a bullshit. If you look at the history of countries around the world, when you start treating people differently, not because of any harm they're doing anybody, but because they're different, that's the path whereby freedoms begin to erode. Is that what you did to your brother? Yes. Uh, an Coward. An American in the United States, uh, I am painfully aware of the history of what happens when people are treated differently under the law. And there's were all sorts of rationalizations that were provided.
by the power structure for decades in the United States for segregation and Jim Crow and slavery. And they were wrong. If somebody is a law-abiding citizen going about their business and doing all the other things that good citizens are supposed to do. Help their brother like you were supposed to. And not harming anybody. The idea that they are... And you've killed people with those drones, so yeah, you're a killer. It's wrong. It's wrong, you're right. Just like President Obama. I think we also need to be able to speak frankly about some of these things. And the fact of the matter is that Kenya, the United States, we share so many values. Our common love for democracy, entrepreneurship, value for families. These are things that we share. But there are some things that we must admit we don't share. Our culture, our societies don't accept. But it's very difficult for us to be able to impose on people that which they themselves... There's one really big lesson. Don't this is threaten people repeatedly. Because if you do, today, in the end they cry wolf. They just stop believing in us. And we had that from our uh, politicians and our jobs with the exception. You know, if you vote this way, you'll be poorer. Terrible things will happen. But with the Obama thing... You, 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 you mean this Project Fear, where the establishment was saying you're going to have World War III, you're going to have a depression, all of that? Yes, I mean, you know, Project Fear, or in the end, I think, when Obama came, it was virtually Project Threat, to be honest with you. So, so you know, threatening people too much actually insults their intelligence. And the lesson from the Obama disease is even more fascinating. You know, he is the most powerful man in the world, coming from a country that we have always had, you know, the huge high regard for. Uh, and I saw Obama saying what he said, and a lot of people in Britain said, how dare the American president come here and tell us what to do? And it backfired. And I think we got an Obama Brexit bounce because people do not want foreign leaders telling them how to think and how to vote. The British uh, people shocked the global elites and delivered the <laughs> new world order by voting to leave the corrupt European Union, fed up with massive, mainly Muslim immigration, an unfair trade dump, but another major factor entered into the stunning and unexpected vote as the leader of the Brexit campaign revealed in an interview Friday afternoon. Nigel Farage, head of the UK Independence Party, who led the effort to leave the EU cited none other than a pompous Barack Hussein. Obama is a major factor spurring the angry Brits to the polls. Doc Obama made a special trip to London a month ago to urge Brits to vote to remain in the EU and then threatened to isolate the UK if they didn't listen. Dot in his interview with they Ray Mark, Farage cited Obama's threats as a critical factor in driving the vote in favor of Brexit. Threatening people too much actually insults their intelligence and the lesson from the Obama visit is even more fascinating. Dot here is the most powerful man in the world coming from a country that we've always had a huge high regard for and a lot of people in britain said how do the american president come here and tell us what to do and it backfired and i think we got an obama breaks it down because people do not want foreign leaders telling them how to think and how to vote that guy was glad that they left england They ain't saying much now, but yeah, that was a uh, dude made uh, 43 million off his movie telling the truth about Obama, and nobody watched it, guys. Go see it.